Right, so I'm making a start on doing these crossovers and just taking the other LS31 apart and as you can see, tons of corrosion on the back of the magnet on the woofer. I mean, that is only um, surface, so it's uh, not going to be a problem. The crossover on this one is a lot neater than the other, which is quite interesting. Um, and also the caps that have been used, uh, rather than clustering lots of different values to make the overall value needed, these look to have only used a couple of capacitors. Uh, the resistors are in different places. So, yeah, a teeny bit different. Um, but a bit of debris inside this, so we'll give it all a good clean. That's all come from the woofer. And... Um, Client wants to retain these 11 microfarad caps if we can, if they're okay. The other one was all right, so we'll check that one. But otherwise, yeah, get them rebuilt and um, put them back in. Right, so both the crossovers are out again. And there is some slight differences between them, um, just in the capacitors. So um, on the one we previously took apart, we had um, a one a one and um, a 0.5 so 2.5 that's on the woofer circuit um, but on this one we've got a one and a 0.5 so 1.5 so yeah this looks to me like it's been added on um, so I'm given that this speaker is the one that was a bit all over the shop and I found a few reasons why that probably is um, we had this resistor jumped, if you remember. Um, so I'm going to do um, 1.5 here and the same on this one. And then when I measure them, I can adjust if needed, if it does need that other cap value in there to correct the woofer. Um, and then on the tweeter circuit, we've still got an 11 and an 11 microfarad. I need to test this. Um, but here we have a 2 and a 0.5, so we're making a 2.5. Here we have a 2 and behind it a 0.5, but also on top of it a 0.1. So 2.6, 2.5, so not a lot in that. Um, so I'm going to go with a 2.5 and if I need to adjust it, I can add that in. Um, I will probably need to... These are tapped differently um, between the two, so I'll we'll probably need to adjust those, but we will see how they measure. So yeah, I'm going to check out all the inductors and resistors on this. I won't bore you with that because you saw how I did it in the other one and uh, get some new components in there.
oddly enough, the rotors on these, if you follow all the connections around on the crossover, are actually connected out the phase, which is a really unusual. Remember the cone is going like that, so it's kind of not starting like that, it's starting like that. I want to look at it that way, it's not push, 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 it's push, pull, push, pull. But it's strange. Lovely job, <laughs> Easier to do these after. Yep. Okay. You got to watch me struggle for five minutes. That's got to be worth it. So the washer, nylon nut. So once these are all back together, the um, next thing I've got to do is measure them and potentially we saw some different components value wise in between the two, potentially make some adjustments and possibly adjust the tapping on the um, auto transformer on the tweeter. Um, but yeah, we will see how they measure up. Anyway, I'm going to do these up. You don't need to watch me do that. So just before I close up the um, the last speaker, it's always interested me the the way um, a lot of the BBC design crossovers follow the same sort of um, layout, um, the same sort of not not components, but they use the same sort of setup. Um, you know, like on this, we have a third order arrangement on the woofer. And then on the second inductor, we have a bypass resistor. Um, you know, you see the same thing on the on the BC1. Um, you see it on the LS36. Um, and then we've got you know a, a third order arrangement on the on the tweeter. Um, we're rolling off the top of that with an inductor, or to flatten it out with a bypass resistor. Um, we've got the auto transformer. You see that on the um, LS35. Uh, sorry 35a and you know the same with the to a degree with the bc1 uh, they've all followed that sort of same setup um, so i guess yeah if it's not broke and you can make it work for all your designs then uh, it's always a good starting point right so both of these are back together now and it's time to do all the measurements and if I need to make any final tweaks um, so they match as best as possible but hopefully we've ironed out all the wrinkles and um, yeah they're sonically back to how they should be um, so that's going to conclude my work on these um, they're going back to my client um, as they are so um, someone else will be I'm sure doing the cosmetic um, repaint um, I'm not taking that on um, so yeah what I'll do I'll put all the measurements up now at the end and um, yeah catch you all on the next one
Hello, just a final little conclusion on um, on the LS three ones. Um, as you've seen, they they now measure really really well, um, and you know really really close together. They're a, a really good match. Um, they didn't initially, um, I think, because they're they've been sat for quite a long time, not being used, um, and I think they were stored away. Um, they needed exercising and I left them playing for, I don't know, a good couple of hours um, and then took the measurements and that's what you've just seen. So it took a while for them to kind of clear their throat, if you like. There's obviously going to be some settling in period with the new components that are in there. Um, but, um, sorry, measurements wise, they're, they're really good. Um, I did have a listen to them for about an hour um they're very neutral um they're very they do have quite an older sound to them um you know you've got a big 15 inch woofer there which looking at the measurements and the phase relationship between the um tweeter and the um the woofer i think the crossover point is around 1600 hertz something like that um and yeah, they've they've just got um, quite a an old sound to them, if that that makes sense. Um, just that very neutral. I didn't find them particularly crisp, um, but then we are using two HF thirteen hundreds or the GE presence unit. I think they probably were, um, and they do roll off heavily. Um, there's also no, also an inductor on the. Um, uh, tweeter circuit um, before the uh, sorry before we get to the tweeter so we are rolling off the top or kind of using that to to flatten down the response which ultimately does roll it off a bit more than the natural 1300 I'm uh, sorry 13 kilohertz roll off um, but yeah if I used a bit of tone control if I wound the treble up then they brightened up and I quite like them um, but they're definitely a monitor speaker. They're just neutral, uh, quite nice and flat. Um, they're, like I say, fairly warm sounding. They have that rise in the um, the bass region. Uh, you know, we sort of come up and then down and across, um, which you know you often see. They they sit on the floor, so a lot of that is probably for floor reflection, reflection reinforcement. Um, but yeah, they've they've turned out well. I think they are what they should be. Um, but yeah, all done. So I just thought I'd quickly wrap it up. Okay, cheers.